Cari amici dello spazio della politica della Repubblica degli Stagisti, siamo a Bruxelles nell'ufficio dell'onorevole Turunen, 26 anni, danese eh, del Gruppo dei Verdi, ha curato nel luglio un rapporto, una risoluzione che è stata votata all'unanimità del Parlamento europeo, un rapporto sulla disoccupazione giovanile e sugli stage. Dear Emily Turunen, thanks for uh, letting us uh, interview you. Uh, in July, the European Parliament adopted the resolution to fight uh, youth unemployment and to regulate uh, internships in the European Union. So you drafted yes. the report. Uh, what are the main conclusions? Um, I think they are surprisingly clear, uh, as uh, it was a compromise between political families, the Conservatives, the Socialists, the Greens and the Liberals, uh, ended up backing uh, this proposal. And there are some things that are worth mentioning. One of them is on internships. Uh, the report demands a, qual a European quality charter on internships. This means defining how long can you be in an internship, uh, you, that you have to have a salary, uh, that it has to have an educational value. So it is the first step to really getting some regulation around internships. Second, uh, it asks for a European Youth Guarantee so that young people cannot be unemployed more than four months and they have to be offered a job or education. So these are two very important issues that, uh, that we agreed. And so which are the countries most at risk in the European Union, both concerning uh, unemployment, youth unemployment mm -hmm. and internship and misuse, in your opinion, in your survey? Youth unemployment is really serious issues in, in all countries. Actually it's the same situation now as in the 80s where we are at risk of losing a generation. So especially I would say in Southern Europe and in Eastern Europe there are very very high uh, percentages of youth unemployment. So Spain is of course the worst example more than I think the newest number figure is uh, almost 42 percent of young people are uh, unemployed and same goes for some of the Eastern European countries. So it's a really severe situation. On internships, uh, we lack statistics. So, um, so when we get them one day, I might be surprised, but from what I have learned from youth organizations and so on, what the, the little figures that we have, they show that it's uh, a, a big problem in uh, Italy and in France, in Germany, UK, Uh, also, I have had some reports from Spain and Portugal. This is my might be one of the causes of uh, the fact that uh, so many Italians come uh, and ask for uh, an internship in the European institutions because uh, yes. uh, there is no regulation, they are not paid in Italy in, and in the European institution they are. And uh, you know Sometimes. That, uh, I also have to say that this report uh, It's really clear on the European institutions because we should be a flagship, mm -hmm. uh, be the good example, and today we are not. So there are also cases of bad internships in this house, so the report says that must end. We must be the good example. Okay, so now the next step, how can you force the European Parliament and the European Union can force member states to implement uh, the guidelines of your uh, Resolution. First, uh, first we would need to draft a real uh, quality charter at European level and that work is uh, hopefully will be supported by the Commission. I have started already with the European Youth Forum to try to get some content uh, and then it should be, be if, it, if it were to be implemented, it should be of course uh, through a legal procedure where Commission comes forward, uh, Council The ministers agree, the parliament agrees, and we, we will have it. And then the countries will, will, of course, have to implement it and follow it. But as a start, I would uh, ask all member states to make a national reg re regulation around this, because we, we cannot wait for, for setting the European uh, internships. So those countries who are working should speed up the work, get their national regulation on place, And at the European level, we could find a minimum harmonized uh, approach, a minimum sort of uh, rights, uh, and then the countries can always move beyond if they want to make additional or 
better regulation. About the uh, European yeah. Charter on Internship, uh, in Italy the, um, La Repubblica degli Stagisti wrote down uh, a draft, but who should adopt it? The European Union, the European Commission, the national government, the regional government, um, all of the free powers? Um, there are a lot of players today, but I, I think it would be relevant um, at, to have it at the national level, to have a specific regulation that can cover the national specificities, because there are quite big differences between the labor markets and also between uh, the educational systems. So we would need some kind of more detailed reg regulation at, at national level. And at the European stage, um, it would be more overall uh, targets, overall headlines we would go for. And that would be this house, the parliament, and the council that needs to agree on a text. So we are the legislators at European level, so we should, we should take responsibility. Do you think in your experience in the last month of working on this that there is a sensibility, political sensibility on these issues? Because we all uh, often talk about the, uh, the difficulty of uh, access to jobs for youth, mm -hmm. but not often we'll, uh, we are, uh, hear about uh, internships. Uh, it's emerging. It, well, it, it's not really, you won't see it in front of the newspaper, of course. It's more, uh, it's, it's more I think, uh, still a question uh, that, that uh, has a life among some policy makers, some young people, but it's not really a broad public debate. But it should be, because it's, it's about the future labor force and it's about their chances. And we, our generations, we are the ones who are very vulnerable at the moment, very hard hit by the crisis, very weak, uh, and very much uh, abused, I think, by employers. So we need some backing from the rest of the population uh, because we're the ones who are going to lift the future welfare. Okay. So yeah, let's switch uh, mm -hmm. topics. So you are 26, uh, you yes. are a girl, and you are the youngest uh, member of the European Parliament. Mm -hmm. So especially from an Italian point of view, you are panda. Uh, <laughs> so how did it happen? Um, I think we have a, a quite open political con culture in Denmark and uh, in the national parliament we have several members uh, at my age. Uh, we have uh, at least two from the same year as I was born and then we have several below 30. So uh, it, it, it's not that rare, uh, but, uh, but it's rare to be elected for the European stage. It's, it's mainly those who are on the way to pensions, we send them, the <laughs> old politicians, as the end of their career. But uh, I think something is changing and uh, that's because Europe is becoming more important. So the young politicians like me, we reach out for that. I was chairing my youth, uh, my party's youth wing in Denmark, which is the biggest youth movement mm -hmm. we have in Denmark, uh, uh, a, cent a green left uh, youth coalition. Um, and I was asked by my party uh, to run as a candidate, but it was not my party who decided, it was of, of course the voters, so okay. I was lucky that uh, I got the backing from uh, a lot of people in Denmark. So how do you feel about working here? Do you manage to have a generational approach to the debates in the, in the house? Uh, is there a youth lobby in Brussels or not? Um, well, I, I, I want to insist that I'm, though I'm young, I'm, I'm more part of an ideological movement that crosses ages and generations, which is, uh, I would say, green left movement, working for social justice, working for environmental uh, improvements. Uh, so that's, that's my, my first sort of uh, belonging where I belong, but, but secondly, yes, I am from a generation that might think a little bit differently than older politi politicians, also about communication and our relation to the public, um, the way we communicate with the social media and so on. Um, so I guess we have some, uh, some thing 
common between us. There is no real youth lobby. Maybe we should mm. start one. <laughs> so you, you come from a youth um, organization in, uh, yes. of a party. So uh, where does a young leader in 2010 uh, should ca could come from? Uh, so a youth party organization, uh, um, student union or other kind of organizations. What, what is your experience but also your suggestions to young Italian girls and boys wanting to, to do something, something for their, their country? I think there are many, many places to work for your country or for, for Europe or for the world. Uh, I started in an NGO working with uh, Cambodian women mm -hmm. uh, on, on trafficking issues, so that was something completely different from, from a formal political stage. So I've been in NGOs, I've been in students' work, um, then I entered sort of party politics. So there are many platforms, I would say, and it does not necessarily have to be a political party. If, if people cannot identify with that, there are very important tasks of building strong student movement, building strong trade unions, uh, because that's the fight of everyday life, if, if, if we build those fellowships. So I think young people should go uh, where they feel they can make a difference. And the last question was about uh, the internet and how internet uh, relates to politics. So how do you use and if you use Facebook, Twitter and other social networks? And the European Parliament is launching uh, the Tweet Your M MEP uh, in the next days to make uh, people uh, be in contact with their MEP. What do you think about this proposal? Uh, it's this good. Proposal? It's excellent. I must say I'm... Uh, I'm a little bit old in that sense because I'm, I'm not so interested. Uh, as a private person, I don't use Facebook very much, but I understand that it's a very important tool for me to communicate with voters. So I'm learning <laughs> to use these social medias, uh, and of course, it comes more natural to me probably than a 55-year-old man who has never uh, tweeted or been on Facebook. So. Uh, I think it's excellent that the Parliament takes these steps to open up to the public um, and I now follow that and try to do my best to be there also. Okay, thanks uh, very much Emily Thank you. and keeps, uh, keep going on uh, working on these subjects which are very important from our generation and our uh, readers. Thanks a lot. Thank you.